For case 15, we have a 40-year-old who fell four stories and now has lower extremity paralysis. We have a couple of images from a thoracic spine. It's a little bit challenging to tell what kind of images you're looking at. I will give you that. This is a T1 pre-contrast on the left, and this, I believe, is a T2 on the right here. Here we have some axial images through the area of abnormality. This is a T1 weighted image. Then we have just a couple of additional axial T1 weighted images also through a few adjacent levels. Your first question is what's the diagnosis here? Your second question is what is causing the T1 hyperintensity along the dorsal epidural space? You have a couple of choices. Is it fat, artifact, venous plexus, or blood products? So here we're looking at a spinal epidural hematoma. This person had a severe trauma, and the epidural hematoma is a dreaded complication of spine trauma because it causes an associated canal compression that can worsen uh, the extent of injuries. Now the imaging appearance that you can have is a fluid collection, typically in the epidural space. It can be ventral or dorsal, so it can be on either side of the spinal canal. It can be very heterogeneous, and to be honest, it can be very tricky to see. They can really even cause you to kind of have trouble knowing what kind of image you're looking at. Here you see some T1 weighted images uh, through the center here, so this is a T1. Uh, through the spinal canal here, and what you see is there's something filling the dorsal epidural space. So the canal is displaced ventrally here, and you have some T1 hyperintense materials here. And then uh, these arrows that were pointed out on the previous image uh, is filling the dorsal epidural space here. So it's T1 hyperintense, very heterogeneous. And then what you also see is the fractures. So many times you're going to already have CT on these patients, so you may know that there's fractures, but you see at least uh, two compression fractures here, possibly more. And then that's what's uh, leading to this fluid collecting in the spinal canal or blood collecting in the spinal canal. Now that T1 hyperintensity in the epidural space, we already talked about this a little bit, is for blood products. Uh, they're T1 hyperintense. There's not a lot of stuff that can be T1 hyperintense. You can get artifacts and CSF flow. Uh, you can get venous plexus, although that tends to be uh, more common in the, on the ventral side. Uh, but here the dreaded thing you have to worry about is blood products.